name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My beloved one today is 21st day of July, being Sunday. And week 16, not that time of the church calendar year B. Our readings will be coming from Prophet Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 1 to 6. A response will sound come from Psalm 23, verse 1. A second reading will be coming from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 to 18. A gospel message will come from Matthew Gospel chapter 6, verse 30 to 34. The theme of our message today is, The Lord is my shepherd. Today, Prophet Jeremiah prophesies about the shepherds who don't, didn't take care of the sheep entrusted into their hands. He said, what to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture? Says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherd who, who care for my people, you have scattered the flock, my flock. You have driven them away. You have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Yes. It's telling you what the shepherds who are supposed to care for the sheep are not caring. They have not cared for them, have not attended to them, rather they scattered them because they don't attend to them, because they don't care. They scattered because they don't care. They were driven away. Yes, because of the shepherd doesn't care. When you fail to do your work, the consequence is that the work suffers. And now when the shepherd fails to attend to the sheep, the sheep scatters. They are driven away. They are buried. The lions will devour them. Yes. But the Lord said today, I will gather the lemons of my flock from all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them, look at it, I will bring them back to their food, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. Yes, he's going to do it himself now. Since the people he entrusted could not do it, he wants to do it himself. I will set shepherd over them whom we care for them. Now, we then set a shepherd over them who will care for them, not the one who will not care for them. And they, yes, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall any be missing, says the Lord. You see, when a good shepherd is after them, no one will miss. They will not fear. They will not be dismayed. They will not go hungry. They will not go thirsty. He will care for them. That's the role of the shepherd toward the sheep. And when the good shepherd comes, all these things will be fulfilled. They will be careful. He said, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as a king and deal wisely and shall is a good justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell in, sec in, sec in security. And Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. That's the prophecy of Jeremiah about the good shepherd. And the shepherds who are not doing their work, they have had it today, if you are not a good shepherd, you are not tending to the sheep, the primary their mission is to care for the flock, nothing more. Any other thing is unacceptable. No excuse is acceptable to care for the flock. And when you fail to care for them, all the grammar you are speaking has no value for God. It's going to take care of you and then drive you from the walk and appoint another person to do it for him. Now what he prophesies he will do. 
And these days, many of their shepherds all over the world doesn't care for their flock at all. They're more interested in themselves than the flock. They're more interested in themselves than the flock. Many of them. And that's why the sheep are scattering. That's why they're being devoured by evil ones all over the place. Because the shepherds are no more caring, attending to the sheep. But today God says he has an answer. He will do it himself. I will set up a shepherd after his own mind. I haven't said this. That's why today you can see in the gospel message how Jesus, the good shepherd, chose 12 apostles and sent them out to continue the mission of the, good, of the shepherd. And they returned and were giving him report of how they walked, the, what they preached, and what they did. And when he has seen them, they is almost exhausted in caring, in teaching, and caring for the flock. He asked them, let's go come to a lonely place at, to rest a while, to at least to take a little rest. Yes. For many, were, many people were coming to them and going that they have no leisure even to eat their food. A good shepherd has no time for himself. He's only caring for the sheep. So they have, they have not even leisure to eat, eat their very food. Yes. And that's why he took them in a boat to a lonely place for themselves, for themselves by themselves, to, that they will have a right to rest. Now many saw them going and knew them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them of where they have gone to rest. And the people are already there ahead of them. And when they landed on the boat in the, in the, water, the shore of the sea, he saw a great trunch and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. You see, a shepherd, forget about his sheep. Even when he's tired, he still thinks about the sheep. He saw them. They wanted to rest, but there was no rest. They continued, he continued himself teaching them and caring for them. A good shepherd, attending to the flock, forgetting himself. That's why a good shepherd sometimes exhausts himself. Don't that he will exhaust himself carry for the sheep. And that's what is that what it takes to be a good shepherd. Caring for the flock. Not this day the flocks are not cared for. The shepherds have they are fattening themselves. Living big, flying in jets and riding the big cars and eating eating one tonly and dressing gorgeously with expensive clothes because they don't care. If they care for the sheep, they will have no, this is will not happen. All those things will go to the sheep. But since they, they, they are more interested in themselves than the sheep, they feed none on the, from the sheep. Exploit money from them, and they reach themselves. And bring poverty to the sheep. Yes, a good shepherd is the one who laid down his life for his sheep. A good shepherd is the one who became poor to make his sheep rich. A good shepherd is the one who loves himself to lift up his sheep. A good shepherd is the one who goes naked to clothe his sheep, goes hungry to feed his sheep. That's a good shepherd. Has sleepless nights so that the sheep will sleep and protect the sheep against wolves, not running away when the wolves come. That's a good shepherd, attending to them, caring for them in their hearts, caring for them in their homes. Caring for them in their education, caring for them in their social relationship, in their homes, in their living. A good shepherd cares for all this. He's a father to them. But the sheep, a bad shepherd, they exploit them. You can see it happening today in many places. That's why they have private jets, built university for themselves, and live lavish life. Lavishly. They have no time. But these flaws are burning entrusted to them. 
since they are not attending to them, since they just, in face of their weakness, started attending to them. And now why, in the St. Paul letter to the Ephesians, you can see today this promise of Jeremiah coming to fulfillment. A good shepherd, brethren, now in Christ the good shepherd, you who, you who once were fair, rough, have been brought near in the blood of Christ. Yes, with the blood of Christ, all those who were far away have been brought near. That's why he said, we gather them from every direction. By his blood, they have brought them down nearer. For he is our peace. For he is our peace. He is the peace. Who has made us both, both Gentiles and Jews, one people, one, have broken down the wood, dividing wall of hostility, have brought the, broken down the wall of hostility between nations and made them into one nation. No more Gentiles, no more the Jews, no more the free men, no more slaves. Every one of them became one family. He had done this with blood. He had drawn all of them near. And by his blood, body, he had broken down the walls of hostility. Yet by his body, the church, he had broken down the wall of hostility. He has abolished all the cultures, all the customs of the people to set up one culture and one custom. And that's the commandments and the word of, the word of God. Yes. Destroy with his body the hostility that divides them. Different customs, different culture that divide the people. But now he has broken down those cultures and set up one culture for the people. That's why Christianity becomes the supreme culture. And the custom, the commandments of God. I brought the two nations into one. So make peace, thereby making peace. Because if all of us belong to one family, there will be, if we have the same culture, there will be no hostility among us. That's the only way we can bring peace. Or when you believe in something else, have a different culture, have a different culture. Sometimes what you value is what I don't value. What you, you estimate, I don't even estimate. There will be crisis, there will be wars. That's why you have wars today, not over the war, because of the dividing war of hostility. But God Jesus came to bring all these things to one. And now why he said the intention of God is that at the end of the day, he will bring everything under Christ in heaven and on earth. Yes, confess Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10. That's the plan. That everything will come under him. And that's the way we can bring peace to the world. When all of us share the same culture, the same faith. And this faith that forms culture, we have the same faith, we have the same culture. And that's what it Text. And now why the only way he can make peace? So that he might reconcile both, both of us to God. In one body, through the cross. Yes, in one body, through the cross. Thereby bringing the hostility to an end. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and those who were near. For through him, we both have access to one spirit, to the Father. All of us. You see, it is in this world, good shape that we all of us become one flock. Yes, have the same protection and everything. And that's the only way we can bring peace. And that is only through this good shepherd. And now when the psalmist understood this so well today, they said, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Yes. The Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing I shall want. No more scattering, no more running away, no more being devoured by wolves. We shall all be fruitful and multiply and live in peace with each other, the Gentiles and the Jews, making peace in the whole world when there's a good shepherd. When the Lord is our shepherd, that's what will happen. May God help us understand that when the Lord is our shepherd, there will be peace. We shall be a family, one flock, one shepherd. May we understand this today through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of us. I will celebrate the good shepherd who is our shepherd.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be with you all.